In the 10th end, the Wilsons and Mills have peeled off Northern Ontario front stones, keeping the front clean, with Hackner having two on the ring. Rick only has to kill one of these to clinch the Briar Championship. And look at this winning shot. He gets them both. Saskatchewan, Briar champion, by a final score of 10 to 6 over Alan Hackner of Northern Ontario. Kyle's Rock comes down, he makes contact, but doesn't quite move it far enough, just leaving it for a biter on the side. And now Hector and his teammates from Northern Ontario, who had control of this game almost from the outset, are helpless now. And they can only sit back and watch the final draw attempt by Kerry Burton. The tie is on the ice. Mark Olson calls for quiet. This one is for the Labatt's Gold Tankard and the Canadian Curling Championship. We really had to be careful here because the ice was very slick. And with the dramatic turn of events, the adrenaline was really flowing, so I really had to be careful not to slide out too hard. And the sweepers who had overswept that key draw shot against Northern Ontario in the extra end of the round robin are being very, very careful with this one. But at this stage, Kerry Burtnick knew he'd won himself a Canadian curling championship. <laughs> Jim Spencer and Ron Camerlock, crowned prior champions of 81. That little biter left by Hackner, the deciding point as it turned out, by the edge of the 12-foot ring. And so they become the youngest team in the long history of the Canadian Curling Championship to win a briar. 22 years of age, the average age on this Assiniboine Memorial Curling Club rink from Winnipeg, Manitoba. in the ninth end. The draw for two looks to be warm. It comes all the way back. Giles gets just one point and trails 7-3 with just an end to play. So close, these Northern Ontario wives have been before, and now, with their team leading by four into the final Hi. end, they appear to have a lock finally on this 82 Labatt Briar tankers. Rick Lang, the veteran third, one of the best in the country, kills the final rock of British Columbia, and that does it. Northern Ontario finally climbs the mountain to the Briar throne room. For Hector, a dream come true. If Bernie Sparks continues to shoot like this, he will go a long way in the upcoming playoffs. This remote possibility by Bernie Sparks turned out to be the shot of this briar, perhaps any other briar. Paul Savage has successfully convinced Eddie Wernick to attempt the triple takeout. A tough shot, but one he needs to maintain his edge in this game. makes a super curling shot. Now Wernick, his first rock of the final end. Playing Alberta's second stone. He kills it. Ontario in a great situation now with Lukowicz's final rock coming up. No way. I think these guys want the briar. <laughs> Looking at it from this end. Yeah, right. Lukowicz and Chernoff agree that the situation is virtually impossible. This one is strictly heave and hope by Eddie Lukowicz. And the hope fades right there. Indeed, Ontario's Eddie Wernick 
has won the 1983 Canadian Curling Championship and the Labatt Prior Tanker. Waranek with Paul Savage, John Kawadze, and Neil Harrison on their way to becoming world champions for Canada. Mike Riley with Brian Taves, the shooter, his third man, intent on one thing, removing the last mathematical hope of Eddie Waranek, the rock at the edge of the 12 foot on the left. He's on the money. Up go the brooms, signaling victory for Manitoba as Eddie Waranek has given over the Briar Tanker to a Manitoba team skipped by Mike Riley that finished at a tie for first place in the round robin and then won the showdown they had to win here today in Victoria. Manitoba indeed number one in the world of curling in Canada and holders of the Labatt Briar Tanker. This moment feels he has just won the Canadian Men's Curling Championship. He has left Al Hacker with an almost impossible situation. Probable odds of a thousand to one, and the only shot Hackner has is a thin double on the shot stone on the left, rolling over to catch the other one at the back. He needs it for two and a tie. But not many in this Coliseum give Al Hackner much of a chance to make the shot he's going for. But the Iceman has impressed people before, and the Iceman can never be discounted. Hector sends it on its way. A last desperate attempt to force an extra end. Well by the guard, and it begins to make its move. Contact with one, a collision with another, and Hector has made a shot that will be remembered long in dire history to produce a tie after regulation play. Alan Hackner has the crowd in Moncton on its feet roaring. So Hackner, who battled back so bravely in the 10th end, now comes down to this, his final rock of the extra end, trying to guard the shot and steal it. The intent of this rock is to force Pat Ryan to draw. But as Hector said, he does not want to be too deep. The rock begins to move toward the center line. It'll come in a little deeper than Hector wanted. But one quarter covered, it's a problem for Ryan. So Hackner has done the job in the 11th end. And now it falls to the holder of the hammer, Pat Ryan, to win the briar with one final stone. He could play the shot at the top of the forefoot but there's no guarantee he would get shot stone. He could draw to a corner of the forefoot, and that's what Ryan decides to do, as Hackner and a capacity crowd watches the determining shot for the Canadian Men's Curling Championship. 11 straight victories, and 10 ends of this final are behind him now. It all comes down to this one final run. Sweeper staying very close, but staying off it, just brushing lightly. Midway down, they realize the rock's got a good head of steam. It's not digging in. The rock is hanging out. He needs a corner of the forefoot. He slides back, back, back too far. He leaves Hackner with the rock at the top of the forefoot to win the Canadian Men's Curling Championship. Pat Ryan has just experienced the heartbreak of a Briar playoff. Northern Ontario wins the 85 Labatt Briar Tanker. Nothing in play for Howard, nowhere to hide. But he's got to put this stone on the rings to make Lukowicz work for the winning point. Weight looks good, down back to the tee line, and that's all that Howard can do. The Labatt Briar final now is in the hands of Eddie Lukowicz of the province of Alberta. This one for all the marbles.
Good line. Sweepers watch in delight as Eddie hits, rolls, but hangs around. Alberta has won the 86 Canadian Men's Curling Championship and the beautiful Labatt Dryer Tanker Trophy. Eight years later, after his first Dryer Championship, Eddie Lukowicz strikes again and wins the chance to represent Canada in the World Curling Championship. Now, Russ Howard. He has last rock. This is first go to the end. Howard's doing some cherry picking here if he can. And there it goes, as pretty as a picture, and the shooter stays. Now, Bernie Sparks is in all kinds of trouble. Down to one final shot here without the last rock in the 10th end. Bernie can't run, but is hoping for a place to hide. Anxious Wendy Howard, the wife of the Ontario skip, leans in. Bernie, as he approaches the top of the house, looking to freeze as hard as he can, but bumps back the Ontario stone. BC got shot, but it's open for Ross Howard to claim the Briar Tanker. He can pass it on the left. He can pass it on the right. There's plenty of room for Russ here, and he knows it. A week of intense competition. It all comes down to this. Russ Howard goes for it all. And there it is, the tanker comes east to Ontario on the grasp of Russ Howard. His wife, Wendy, delighted, along with a huge crowd in Edmonton, Alberta, they've seen the crowning of a new Canadian curling champion. Russ Howard, his brother, Glenn III, Tim Belcourt, and Kent Carstairs, the four happiest men in the country at this moment. Now Ryan, a key shot for him. Six, three, six, three, three, He stays, which he had to do, and is lying three. Immense pressure on Gene Ritzig of Saskatchewan. There was only one choice now, and that is to find a place to hide. But wait a minute, that rock is digging in. The sweepers in disbelief look up as Ritzik kicks it, and Alberta's Ryan does not have to throw his final rock. Ritzik, coming up horrendously shy of the hog line, has given the Briar Tankard to a shock but ecstatic Alberta team. And now the Ryan family's got a Briar Tanker to go with the Olympic gold medal that Kenny Ryan brought home in Calgary. But one team's joy has to be another's agony. It's a loss, and the way it was lost that Gene Ritzick will live with perhaps the rest of his curling life. But for now, having lost the tankard going 11-0, Ryan wins one in Chicoutimi's Jean-Pierre, Quebec. <laughs>